Mecca Faitiri, at home in Manutuke, outside Gisborne. Epeha Fare is Mecca's sanctuary. Here, photos of her Faitiri Tipuna and late father Wirangi look upon us. I do believe my dad was proud of me. I do think I was the favourite. The Fano have gathered on a Tuesday night to hear Mecca speak in her own words about an incident last year in August that led to her being dumped as customs minister. Two younger talks. Two younger talks, take one. Take one. It's the first time her mum, Auntie May, will hear Mecca address accusations that she's a bully, capable of assaulting a staff member. From the time that the allegations were made up until today, I've always refuted them. There was no altercation, there was no assault. I did not touch my staff member. I growled her for not doing her job, but I didn't touch her. It's awkward and it's painful for Mecca to talk about. I didn't get the opportunity to call my two sons and my mum to tell them this is coming up and to give them my assurances that I didn't do any of what I was accused of. But the embattled MP wants her people to know what happened. Here in front of uh, your whanau at Epeha Whare, Manutu Kemarai, can you tell us what happened back in August the 27th, 2018, the events that led to an incident in which a former staff member of yours alleged that you grabbed her from behind and pulled her, causing some bruising in her arm. What's your recount of that day? We had the Prime Minister in Tairawhiti, we had five uh, Crown Ministers. Um, so I knew, as a local MP, uh, it was going to be an exciting but a very busy day. Uh, and the day started off uh, with a breakfast, the suffragette movement. I had a reasonably new uh, staff member with me. How new is new, Mecca? Uh, she was about six days into a job. Uh, she'd never worked in Parliament. I was constantly looking for my staff member to ensure that she knew where to, to be. As the karanga went, um, she broke away from the ranks and went in front of the karanga because she thought that was her job. Immediately I thought, right, I need to keep an extra eye on my staff member who's probably not been exposed to Māori tikanga. We went from the breakfast, piled into our cars and vehicles, and we went over to Tatunia Pro. Ngāti Pro were excited to have the Prime Minister there. We broke for lunch. I sat with the Komatuas. Uh, they made a seat for Clark and Baby to join our table. And then I noticed ministers leave the dining room. And I got up after Clark and Baby had sat down because we were getting told to go back into the hui. As I walked out uh, in between uh, the foyer and the outside doors of Titinia Pro's main doors, I saw the Prime Minister. Um, having her stand up, mm. uh, surrounded with all the ministers that had accompanied her, except me. So as the local MP, as a minister in Crown, I immediately turned to try and find my staff member, mm. whose role was to make sure I didn't miss those opportunities. Mm. Clearly, uh, I was disappointed that in my neck of the woods, I had lost the opportunity to stand uh, with the Prime Minister and my colleagues. Um, and I took her outside to show her um, the lost opportunity and to express to her, as I did, that this was her job. Um, and I was disappointed. How did you express that disappointment? It was like, this is, the, this is your job. See that over there. This is why you're here. Your job is to get me to these stand-ups and I'm disappointed that we didn't, I wasn't able to be there. Mm. Now, I never raised my voice because I was in a public place. Um, I didn't grab her as I'm alleged to have done because we're in a public place and I don't grab staff. Having done that, having finished the hui, as we were going to my vehicle, I said to my staff member, do you like milkshakes? And she said, I love milkshakes. And I said, well, I'm going to take you to the best milkshake uh, store in Gisborne. And off we went to Captain Morgan's. She had chocolate, I had lime. Two days later, I got a phone call from the Prime Minister's office. Um, it completely blindsided me, Matai. The conversation from the Prime Minister's office went like this. 
we have received a complaint that you manhandled one of your staff members two days ago in Gisborne. I immediately said I absolutely refute those allegations. Many of us here at the Flax Roots level, and most definitely for your whānau that are here tonight, we're not too interested in the Wellington Beltway politics, but it's been difficult to watch this all play out in the media. The allegations of bullying, intimidation, reports using words like assault and disgraced that you run a toxic office. That's totally out of kilter with the person that Ikaroa Rafati voted for. There, there were some misleading and untruths that certain media said uh, about the incident in relation to myself and my office. As you say, you are an athletic, strong-minded woman. There may be a perception that you, that you are a bully, that you, that you are that type of person. Well, I come from a long line of strong women and men that come from places like this. I put so much effort into working with successful team members. Of course, as a manager, you have expectations, and I'm no different. Um, does that make me a bully? No. Are you taking anger management classes? Yes, I have done some mindfulness courses. Yes, I've sought and had counselling. Eight months have passed since that fateful missed photo op with Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Mecca Whaiteri gets another chance, this time at Waipatu Marae near Hastings. Do you think you've done enough to regain the confidence of the Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern? Well, the Prime Minister has been an absolute supporter of mine since this has happened and continues to be a supporter of mine. Uh, she made a decision on the information she had available mm. and the time she had available. It's safe territory for the Ikaroa Rafati MP and her Ngāti Kahungunu kin had a clear message for the Prime Minister. Tēnō uh, hehe mātou kia tua noa i roti te cabinet. Mō tōna kaha kia hāpai ngā me Māori kato. But can Mika Whaiteri return to the fold? Do you want to be a Labour Minister again and get those portfolios back? Is that, is that the goal? Yes. The fire's still burning inside me, Mātai, despite what happened last year. I can see clearly the opportunities going forward. I'm excited about where Māoridom and where iwi are going. This is the first time you've, you've spoken in this way about the incident and the difficult period you went through last year um, up until now. So. Uh, kia hora te marino, kia whakapapapau namu te moana, kia tere te kārohirohi. May the calm be widespread, may the sea glisten like greenstone, and may the shimmer of Tairawhiti summer dance across your pathway. Ngā mihi nui kia koe. Tēnā koe mātai, ngā mihi.